Hello guys, today's Wednesday. Let's start a new chapter of Alice in the Wonderland. Chapter 4. The rabbit sensing a little bill. It was the right rabbit, rolling slowly back again and looking anxiously about as it went, as if it had lost something. And he heard it muttering to itself. The Duchess! The Duchess! Oh, my dear Pauls! All my foreign whiskers. She'll get me executed, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have where can I have dropped them, I wonder? Alice guessed Alice guessed in a moment that he was looking for the fan and a pair of white kid gloves, and she very good naturedly began hunting about for them. But they were nowhere to be seen. Everything seemed to have changed since her swim in the pool. And the great hall, with the glass, with the glass table and the little door, had vanished completely. Very soon, the rabbit noticed Alice, as she went hunting about, and very soon the rabbit noticed Alice, as she went hunting about and called her and, ca and called out to her in angry. <clears throat> very soon, the rabbit noticed Alice, as she went hunting about and called out to her in an angry tone. Why, Marianne, what are you do what are you doing here? Run home to run run home this moment and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now. And Alice was so much frightened that she ran off at once in the direction it pointed to, without trying to explain the mistake it had made. He took me for this for his housemaid, she said to herself as she ran. How surprised he'll be when he finds out who am I? But I'd better take, would I'd be, would I'd better take him his fan and gloves. That is, if I can, <clears throat> would I'd better take him his fan and gloves. That is, if I can find them. As she said this, she came upon a neat little house on the door of which was a bright brass plate with the name W Rabbit engraved upon it. She went in. She went in without knocking, and hurried upstairs. Upstairs, in great fear lest she should, lest she should meet. She went in without knocking and hurried upstairs, in great fear lest she should meet the real Marianne, and be turned out and be turned out of the house before she had found the fan and gloves. How queer it seems, Alice said to herself, to be going to be going messages for a rabbit. I suppose Gina will be sending me your message next. And she began fancying the sort of thing that would happen. Miss Alice, come here directly and get ready for your walk. Come in a minute, nurse, but I've got to see that the mouse doesn't get out. Only I don't only I don't think Alice went on that they let Dina stop in the house if it began if it began ordering people about like that. By this time, she had found her way into that a tidy little room with, with a table in the window, and on it, as she had as she had hoped, a fan and two or three pairs of tiny white kid gloves. She took up the fan and, and, and <clears throat> she took up the fan and a pair of the gloves and was just going to leave the room. When her eye fell upon a little bottle that stood near the looking glass, there was no label this time with the words "Drink me," but nevertheless she uncorked it and put it to her lips. I know something interesting is sure to happen, she had she said to herself. Whenever I eat or drink anything, so I. I know something interesting is sure to happen, she said to herself. Whenever I eat or drink anything. So I just see what this blood bottle does. I do hope it will make me grow large again. For really, I'm quite tired of being such a tiny little thing. It did, it did so indeed, and much sooner, sooner than she had expected. Before she had drunk, before she had drunk half the bottle, she found her head pressing against the ceiling, and had to stoop to, had to stoop to save her neck from being broken. She hastily put down the bottle, saying to herself, That's quite enough. I hope I shan't grow any more. 
as it is, I can't get out at the door. I do wish I hadn't drunk quite so much. Alas, it was, good. It was too late to wish that. She went on growing and growing, and very soon had to kneel down on the floor in, an in, another, in another minute. There was not even room for this, and she tried the effect of lying down with, the, with one elbow against the door, and the other arm curled around her head. Still, she went on growing, and as, as a last resource, she put one arm out of the, of the window, and one foot up the chimney, and said to herself, Now I can do no more whatever happens. What will, what will become of me? Luckily for Alice, the little magic bottle had now had its full effect, and she grew no larger, no larger. Still, it was very uncomfortable, and, and as there seemed to be no sort of chance of her ever getting out of the room again, no wonder she felt unhappy. It was much pleasanter at home, thought poor Alex, or thought poor Alice, when one wasn't always growing larger and smaller and be ordered about by mice and rabbits. I almost wish I hadn't gone down the rabbit hole. And yet, and yet, it's rather curious, you know, that sort of life. I do wonder what can have happened to me. When I used to read fairy, tale, fairy tales, I fancied, I fancied that the, that kind of thing had never happened. And now here I am in the middle of one. There ought to be... There ought to be a book written about me. There, that there ought, that there ought, that there ought. And when I grow up, I'll write one. But I'm grown up now. She had in a sorrowful tone. At least there is no room to grow up anymore here. But then, thought Alice, shall I never get any older than I am now? There'll be, there'll, there'll be a comfort one day. One way, never to be an old woman, but then always to have lessons to learn. Oh, I shouldn't like that. Oh, you, oh, you foolish Alice, she answered to herself. How can you learn lessons in here? Why, there's hardly room for you, and no room at all for any lessons books. And so she went on, taking first one side and then the other, and making a quiet conversation of it all together. Where after a few minutes, she heard a voice outside and stopped to listen. Marianne, Marianne, said the voice, fetch me the gloves this moment. Then came a little pattern of feet of the stairs. Alice knew it, it was the rabbit coming to look for her, and she trembled till she took the house. Till she shook the house, quite forgetting that she was now about a thousand times as large as the rabbit, and had no reason to be afraid of it. Presently, the rabbit came up to the door and tried to open it. But as the door opened in inwards and Alice's elbow was pressed hard against it, that attempt proved a failure. Alice heard it say to itself, "Then I go round and get in. Then I go round and get in at the window." That you want? That you? That you want? Thought Alice. That you want? Thought, thought Alice. And after waiting till she fancied, and after waiting till she fancied, she heard the rabbit just under the window. She suddenly spread out her hand and made a snatch in the air. She did not get hold of anything, but she heard a little shriek and a fall, and a crash of broken glass, from which she concluded that it was that it was just possible it had fallen into a cucumber frame or something of the sort. Next came an angry voice, the rabbits, Pat, Pat, where are you? And then a voice she had never heard before, sure, sure then I'm, he sure then I'm here, Jing for apples, your, your honor. Jing for apples indeed, said the rabbit angrily, here, come and help me out of this, sounds of, sounds of more broken glass. Now tell me, Pat, what is, what is that in the window? Sure, sure, it's an arm, Your Honor. He pronounced it in arm. It's an arm. Your arm. Your arm. He pronounced it arm. 
Truly it's an army, yeah Aaron. Yeah Aaron. An army, goose. Who ever saw one that size? Why? It fills the whole window. Sure it does, yeah Aaron. Yeah Aaron. Yeah Aaron. Yeah Aaron. Yeah Aaron. What is an arm? What is an arm for all that? Well, it's got no business there at any rate. Go and take it away. Go and take it away. There was a long silence after this, and Alice could only hear whispers now and then, such as, Sure, I don't like it, Yerana. Yer, Yeran. At all, at all. Do as I tell you, you coward. And at last, she spread out her hand again, and made another snatch in the air. This time, there were two little shrieks, and more, sh and more sounds of broken glass. What a number of cucumber frames there must be, thought Alice. I wonder, I wonder what, you, what they'll do next. As for pulling me out of the window, I only wish they could. I'm sure I don't want to stay in here any longer. She waited for some time without hearing anything more. At last came a rumbling of little cartwheels and the sound of a good many voice, voices all talking together. She made out the words, the words. Where is the other letter? Why? I hadn't, I hadn't to bring but one. I hadn't, why? I hadn't to bring but one. Bill's got the other. Bill, fetch here, lad. Here, put him up, put him up at this corner. No, tie them together first. They don't reach half high enough yet. Oh, they'll do well enough. Don't be particular. Don't be particular. Don't be particular. Here, Bill, catch hold of this rope. Will the roof, will the roof bear? Bear? Will the roof bear? Mind the loose stay late. Oh, it's coming down. Heads below. <clears throat> Heads below. A loud crash. Now, who did that? It was Bill, I fancy. I fancy. Who's to go down the chimney? Nay, I shan't. You did it. You do it. That I want then. Bill's to go down. Here, Bill. The master says you go down the chimney. Oh, so Bill's got to come down the chimney, has he? Said, said, said Alice to herself. Shy. They seem to put, a, put a everything upon Bill. I wouldn't be in Bill's place for a good deal. This fireplace is narrow, to be sure, but I think I can kick a little. She drew her, she drew her foot, she drew her foot as far down the chimney as she could, and waited till she heard a little animal. She couldn't guess of what sort of it was, scratching and scrambling about the, scrabble, scratching and scrambling about in the chimney, close above her, above above her, then saying to herself, "This is Bill." She gave one sharp kick and waited to see what would happen. What would happen next? The first thing she heard was a general chorus, chorus of the, "There goes Bill," and then and then the rabbit's voice along, "Catch him, you by the hedge." Then silence, and then another confusion of voices. "Hold up his head, Brandon! Brandon, now! Don't choke him! How was it, old fellow?" What happened to you? Tell us all about it. Last came a little feeble. Last, last came a little feeble squeaking voice. That's Bill, thought Alice. Well, I hardly know. No more. No more. Thank you. I'm better now. But I'm a deal too flustered to tell you. All I know is something comes at me like a jack in the box. And up I go. And, and I. And up I goes like a skyrocket. So you did, the old fellow, said the others. We must burn the house down, said the rabbit voice. And Alice call, call out, called out as loud as she could. If you do, I'll set Dinah at you. Dinah at you. There was, there was a dead silence instantly. And Alice thought to herself. I wonder what they will do next. If they had any sense, they'd take the roof off. After a minute or two, they began moving about again, and Alice heard the rabbit say, A barrel, a barrel full will do. 
a barrel full you do to begin with a barrel full of what a barrel full of what thought alice alice which she had not long to doubt for the next moment a shower of little pebbles came rattling in, in the, at the window, and some of them hit her in the face. I'll put a stop to this, she said to herself and shouted out. You'd better not do that again, which produced another dead silence. Alice noticed with some surprise that the pebbles were all turning into little cakes as they lay on the floor, and a bright idea came into her head. If I eat... One of these cakes, she thought, it's sure to make some change in my size. And as it can't possibly make me larger, it must make me smaller, I suppose. So she swallowed one of those cakes and was delight delighted to find that she began shrieking directly. As soon as she was as soon as, as soon as she was small enough to get through the door, she ran out of the house and found quite a crowd of little animals and birds awaiting outside. The poor little lizard, Bill, was in the middle, being held up by two guinea pigs, who were giving it something out of a bottle. They all made a rush at Alice the moment she appeared, but she ran off as hard as she could, and soon found herself safe in a thick wood. The first thing I've got to do, said Alice to herself, as she wandered about in the wood, is to grow my right size again, and the second thing is to find my way into that lovely garden. I think that would be the best plan. It sounded, ne it sounded an excellent plan, no doubt, and very neatly and simply arranged. The only difficulty was that she had not the smallest idea how to set about it. And while she was peering about anxiously among the trees, a little sharp bark just over her head made her look up in, the, in a great hurry. An enormous puppy was looking down at her with large round eyes, and feebly stretching out the one paw, trying to touch her. Poor little thing, said Alice in a coaxing tone, and she tried hard to whistle to it. But she was terribly frightened at all all the time at the thought that she might be hungry, which in case it would be very likely to eat her up in spite of all her coaxing. Hardly knowing what she did, she picked up a little, a little bit of stick and held it out to the puppy, whereupon the puppy, whereupon, whereupon the puppy jumped into the air, into the air off all its feet at once, with a yelp of delight and rushed at the stick, and made believe to wore it. Then Alice dodged behind a great thistle, to keep herself from being run over, and the moment she appeared on the other side, the puppy made another rush at the stick, and thumbled head over heels in its hurry to get hold of it. Then Alice, thinking it was very like having a game of play with the, a cart horse, and expecting every moment to be trampled under the, its feet, ran around the thistle again. Then the puppy began a series of short charges at the stick, running a very little way forward each time and a long way back, and barking hoarsely all the while, till at last it sat down a good way off, panting, with its tongue hanging out of its mouth, and its great eyes half shut. This seemed to Alice a good opportunity for making her escape, so she set off at once and ran till and ran till she was quite tired and out of breath, and till the puppy's bark sounded quite faint in the distance. And yet, what a dear little puppy to, puppy it was! And yet, what a dear little puppy it was! Said Alice, as she leaned against a buttercup of hers herself, and fanned herself with one of, with one of the leaves. I should have liked teaching it tricks very much, if, if I'd only been the right size to do it. Oh dear, I'd nearly forgotten, forgotten that I've got to grow up again. Let me see. How is it to be managed? I suppose I ought to eat or drink something or other. But the great question is, what? The great question certainly was, what? 
Alice, Alice looked all around her at the flowers and the blades of grass, but she did not see anything that looked like the right thing to eat or drink under the circumstances. There was a large mushroom growing near her, about the same height as herself, and when she had looked under it, and on both sides of it, and behind it, it occurred to her that she might as well look and see what was on the top of it. She stretched herself up she, she stretched herself up on a tiptoe and peeped over the edges of the mushroom, and her eyes immediately met those of a large bull caterpillar caterpillar that was sitting on the, on the top of its arms folded, quietly smoking a long hookah, and taking not the smallest notice of her or anything else. And that's the end of chapter four. Till next time.